Hello and welcome to another dose of Dr. Owen's Muscle Medicine. This video explores the science behind the widely used fitness and athletic supplement beta alanine. Expect to find the following. What is beta alanine and why does it work? What uses does the evidence support? And what causes the infamous beta alanine tingle or paresthesia? And what you can do about this? And finally, if you choose to do so, how to take this supplement safely and effectively. As ever, you can find a link to the script and all reference science in the video description below. Okay, so what is beta alanine and how does it work? Beta alanine is a widely sold fitness supplement promoted for its ability to increase the work capacity of our muscles when operating at high or high to moderate intensity. A term used to describe this is ergogenic. Beta alanine is also a naturally occurring non-essential amino acid, meaning that our livers produce a good amount of it for us every day. This is also true of most animals and therefore beta alanine can be found in many animal products, including milk, eggs, and meat. Despite it being a non-essential amino acid, we can increase our levels of it in the skeletal muscle through both diet and supplementation. Now onto how it works. Beta alanine combines with another amino acid called histidine to produce a dipeptide or protein called carnosine in skeletal muscle. Carnosine then acts within the cells of the muscle to buffer or soak up some of the acid produced through anaerobic respiration, allowing us to continue high intensity work a little longer than would otherwise be the case. One of the products of anaerobic respiration, our well-known adversary lactic acid, releases protons which would normally increase the acidity of the muscle tissue, which in turn reduces their function. We call this muscular fatigue. Carnosine delays the onset of acid-driven muscular fatigue by soaking up some of the proteins released by the lactic acid. However, it eventually reaches a point of having soaked up all that it can soak up. And beyond this point, whether or not we reach acid-driven muscular fatigue is then determined by other buffer chemicals such as bicarbonate. This all sounds well and good, but it does raise an important question. Why don't we just skip the middleman and supplement with carnosine? Uh, the reason that we don't take carnosine supplements is that most of us that aren't protein deficient have plenty of histidine available in the body and muscle tissue ready to be converted into carnosine. It is only the availability of beta alanine that limits the amount of carnosine we produce. If we were to take carnosine supplements instead, it would be broken down in our digestive process anyway to beta alanine and histidine. By the time the supplement arrives in our bloodstream, what was once a carnosine supplement is now a beta alanine and histidine supplement. Now, while histidine is an essential amino acid, i.e. one that we have to make ourselves, one that we have to ingest because we cannot make it ourselves, those of us that eat our recommended daily guidelines of protein have more than enough histidine available to make carnosine. So as long as we're eating enough protein, we need more beta alanine, not more histidine to boost muscle carnosine levels. This sounds a little counterintuitive, but it is a fact proven by science. And to that end, a carnosine pill contains much less beta alanine per weight than a beta alanine pill does. Now, what exercise is beta alanine supposed to benefit and what does the evidence say? Beta alanine is considered an ergogenic supplement. In other words, it allows you to perform more of that high to high moderate intensity muscular work driven by anaerobic respiration. The large body of scientific evidence behind this commonly used supplement has repeatedly found it to be a useful ergogenic, but only under specific conditions. Namely, it is only beneficial when training or performing in the one to four minute range. Now, we've explained that carnosine works by buffering or soaking up some of the acid produced in the muscle tissues during anaerobic respiration, but it's important to note that it can't do this indefinitely and does reach a point where it's all used up. For exercise endeavors lasting over four minutes, the accumulation of acid will continue and promote muscular fatigue despite beta alanine supplementation. And for those exercises lasting less than one minute, we reach the point of muscular failure before the buildup of acid becomes an important factor. This is important to note because most gym goers training for muscular hypertrophy or strength are working in sets and rep ranges that are significantly shorter than one minute and therefore won't usually experience any benefit from beta alanine supplementation. Now let's talk about beta alanine safety and the infamous beta alanine tingle or paresthesia. Firstly, is it safe? Yes. A 2019 meta-analysis of 101 human trials and 50 animal trials found that beta alanine when taken at suggested doses of 3.2 to 6.4 grams per day is safe and yields only one side effect, that of the short-lived widespread tingle 
or paresthesia. Let's talk more about beta alanine paresthesia. This short-lived experience of generalized all-body itching commonly lasts for 15 to 60 minutes, depending on the dose consumed and individual genetics. To the best of our current scientific knowledge, this process is driven by beta alanine itself, or something the beta alanine molecule breaks down into by stimulating the specific nerves responsible for carrying the sensation of itchiness. Unlike allergy or hypersensitivity, it doesn't involve histamine and therefore taking antihistamines won't lessen the symptoms. The two ways that have been shown to be beneficial to reduce the sensation of tingling when taking beta alanine are, one, you can divide your beta alanine daily dose into smaller doses, with four quarter sized doses being recommended by the scientific literature, or two, you can fork out for a more expensive slow release form of beta alanine which has been proven to do the same. Reassuringly, there are no known long-term effects on the nerves of beta alanine supplementation. And this product has been around and in widespread use for many years by now and tested vigorously by the science community. If you've taken the beta alanine supplements without experiencing the tingle, it may be because your genetic code codes for a slightly different itch transmitting nerve that is not affected by beta alanine. Lastly, should you take beta alanine? And if so, how? Firstly, who should take beta alanine? Though it has a solid evidence base supporting specific performance benefits, beta alanine supplementation is not as broadly useful as many supplement companies would have you believe. To experience a positive effect from supplementing with beta alanine, you will need to answer yes to both of the following two questions. Question one, is a significant amount of my training or performance high intensity muscle work lasting between one and four minutes? Question two, am I already nailing the fundamentals of progressive overload good nutrition with adequate protein intake and getting sufficient rest and recovery. Importantly, most gym goers training for hypertrophy or strength gains are unlikely to experience any benefit from beta alanine whatsoever. Equally, extreme endurance athletes are unlikely to see much benefit either. Off the top of my head, you'd have to be a CrossFit athlete, track cyclist, or perhaps somebody who really, really likes long duration planking to routinely experience benefit from beta alanine supplementation. For those of you who answered yes to both of those questions, let's address how to take beta alanine. The first point to consider is that like creatine, our muscle stores of beta alanine and hence its performance effect gradually increase over time with daily supplementation. The recommended daily dose per the International Society of Sports Nutrition is four to six grams per day. And they cite numerous studies to suggest a minimum of four weeks daily supplementation is needed before yielding significant performance benefit. Knowing this, it is worth considering if you're consuming your beta alanine pre-mixed into your pre-workout, are you getting enough of it per week to build muscle carnosine levels? If you're training three times a week, the likely answer is no. So it might be worth getting a pre-workout without beta alanine and instead making beta alanine a separate part of your daily routine. The second important note about how to take it safely and effectively is of course those infamous beta alanine tingles with some scientific evidence supporting either dividing your daily doses, preferably across four quarter sized doses or forking out for the more expensive slow release form of beta alanine to reduce the intensity and the duration of the tingles experienced. And the third consideration is this, what happens when you stop taking beta alanine? Well, you and your muscles will return to their normal levels of carnosine over time. The time taken to return to these normal levels is known as the washout period and typically lasts 6 to 15 weeks. Thank you for watching this video. If you want more science-based fitness, nutrition and supplement explainer videos from me, a medical doctor and chemist, please like the video and subscribe to the channel.